The Ultimate Life is generally a good film, but it's definitely not perfect. There are very obvious ways to improve this film. And I also think that it's better to watch this before watching The Ultimate Gift. And I will explain what I mean by that. This was released in 2013, directed by Michael Landon Jr. And it stars Logan Bartholomew as Jason, Austin James as Young Red, and Drew Waters as Red. And the reason I say I think it's better to watch this before The Ultimate Gift is because this is actually a prequel to The Ultimate Gift, which is an amazing film. Absolutely loved it. When I found out this was a prequel, I was kind of excited. I was expecting the same quality. That's not the case. And prequels are usually created to enhance the experience of the main film. And I feel like generally they're intended to be watched after watching the main film. But I think with this one, it would have been better to watch this one first because then there would have been an element of suspense of not knowing how things would turn out for Red. Whereas if you watch The Ultimate Gift first, you have a pretty strong idea of of where things go. So if you have watched The Ultimate Gift, I would still say give this a go. But if you haven't, maybe consider watching this one first. One way that this could have been improved is by just taking Jason out of it completely. Because he finds his grandfather's journal and he begins reading it. And this is the beginning of the film, I'd say the first five minutes. And then the rest of the film, minus about five minutes, is all about Red. We go back in time to see his grandfather first as a young boy, a teenager, and then as a, as a man as he tries to make his wealth and his fortune and how that comes about. And there was just no need at all for Jason to be in this. His character served no purpose. It was trying to show that his grandfather's legacy through his journal could help to steer him in a better direction. But we don't get enough of that for it to carry any real weight. So the narrative structure isn't amazing. But if you just ignore kind of the first five and last five minutes with Jason, then the rest of the film is pretty enjoyable. It is very slow. Very, very slow. I'd say it took over half an hour for me to get to the point where I could say, actually, this is not too bad. But once it got going, there were times when it was very easy to become emotionally invested. But there were also times when it was a little bit slower. Not a lot was happening. It wasn't very interesting. The performances were fine. Red as a character... Red was always interesting, actually. I think Red definitely was an interesting character. But the events were maybe not that fascinating. But every now and then we'd get a scene that was really good and definitely made it worthwhile. So judging it as a film on its own about a young boy who is trying to make his billions and then how things develop for him while also trying to be a family man, it's okay. It's not too bad if that sounds like it would appeal to you. But as a prequel, it's terrible. (laughs) It really just isn't in the same realm at all. They tried to connect it by putting Jason into it, but because they didn't do a very good job with that, it meant that it just feels like a completely separate story. It doesn't feel like a prequel. Maybe if they'd interjected with Jason a little bit more, that might have helped the slower moments in the film move along a little bit more quickly, it might have kept things a little bit more interesting, and that would have solved both problems of the slow pacing that we often, not always, get, and also the irrelevance of Jason as a character. It would have solved both of those problems and would have made a better film. Alternatively, take the bits with Jason out, you'd only lose about 10 minutes, and then maybe quicken up the pacing or remove some of the fluff in the film and and tighten it up a little bit. So there were definite ways uh, to improve things. But in the end, I'd say I liked it. I didn't love it. It did not meet my expectations. Once I realised it was a prequel for The Ultimate Gift, I was expecting great things. And unfortunately, it just didn't deliver. But if you haven't seen The Ultimate Gift, and it sounds like this would appeal to you, I'd say watch it first. It's obviously hard for me to judge and say that actually that is the better way to view it. But because I knew what things ultimately ended up looking like for Red, there wasn't that element of of suspense or wonder and hope for this character's fortunes because 
I know what happens. So it was relatively interesting, but it would have been better if I hadn't seen The Ultimate Gift. But if you have seen The Ultimate Gift, I'd say check it out. Just don't expect anything that's as good as that film or indeed even in, in the same quality at all. It's a completely different film. It feels different and it definitely isn't uh, as well crafted. The narrative structure is not amazing. But even all of that being said, I didn't mind it. The Ultimate Life could have been better, but it wasn't too bad. And if you sound like the right audience for this, then I'd say give it a go.